Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, children of the Most High, arise, 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 awake to righteousness, always, hallelujah, hallelujah, it's the Shabbat, hallelujah. <laughs> Let us enter into his rest. Hallelujah. Greet one another in the wonderful, beautiful, victorious name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
gym, huh? But I gotta get in there. Hallelujah. 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 Glory.
And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahweh your Elohim, who has brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You now make for yourself a carved image, and your likeness is that, which is in the heaven above, which is in the earth beneath, which is in the waters under the earth. You know, bow down to them, nor serve them. For I am Yahweh your Elohim, and my jealous El, which is in the crookedness of the fathers, on the children, to the third and fourth of those who hate me. But showing love and commitment to the thousands of those who love me and guard my commands. You know, I bring the name of Yahweh your Elohim to not, for Yahweh does not lose run and punish, you bring his name to not. Remember Shabbat to set it apart. Six days you labor, you do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to Yahweh your Elohim, and you don't have to do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male slave, nor your female slave, nor your cattle, nor your stranger within your gates. For in six days you are made heaven and the earth, the sea, now that is in them, I rest the seventh day, therefore you bless the Sabbath day and set it apart. Respect your father and your mother, so your days are prolonged upon the soil which Yahweh Elohim has given you. You are not murder, you are not commit adultery, you are not steal, you are not bear false witness against your neighbor, you are not covet your neighbor's house, you are not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male slave, nor his female slave, nor his ox, nor his donkey, whatsoever belongs to your neighbors. Well, glory to the king. Glory. Let me move this up some. Can y'all hear me? I can't hear me. Can you hear me? I need to talk louder. Let me try to talk louder. Hold on. Hmm. You said a little louder? All right, how about that? Sound good? How about there? Yes, is that all right? Yes, all right. Yah is good, isn't he? Yes, all the time he is. He really is. Yes, he, he really, truly is. Um, we thank him uh, for being in the beginning of the new year. Uh, really, truly do. You're going to see some Israelites that used to come to every feast not even be here this year. Hmm? You hear me? Uh, Y'all, we thank you for your truth. The word that was manifested among us. We come to you in the magnificent name of Yahshua. Our strength, our source of deliverance, forgiveness, and power. Release into our minds this hour the truth in inward parts. We need our conscience opened. To be able to hear your word, perceive your word, and be delivered by the word. Everyone that hears my voice here today, Father, bless them immensely. Grant them the understanding. And grant them the strength and the power of knowledge and wisdom that will bring about a set-apart mind that will please not only you but them. We ask you humbly. For your truth to be revealed here to this day and this hour and grant me utterance to be able to speak your truth with clarity and so simple that even a child can understand. We bless you for all things in the blood of Yahshua. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Glory to the king. There ain't too many people. Everybody that used to beat nemesis to us. It seemed like they all fell off on the wayside. You know, the parable talks about seed that fell off on the wayside. You understand what I mean? Um, you know, we're a deliverance ministry. Um, and in that, that means that we not only believe, but we put in the practice of casting out devils. And um, every believer has abundant supply of them. Even though you may insulate them and protect them through the veil of your flesh, they're still there. You can tell they're still there when you act out of Israelite character. Hallelujah. There's a behavior that's given each and every last one of us. Hallelujah. None of us has the right 
to continue in the old nature of the evil Adamic man. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, sir. Now today, if you will listen, and if you will allow, notice I said allow, yourself to have the ears to hear, you'll be able to learn how to get a whole lot more of your prayers answered. But you got to listen. How many times have you prayed for stuff? Years have gone by and you still don't have your answer. But you still hold on. Huh? Well, if you listen to me today, you won't have to hold on. You can get them answered. Y'all hear that? The book says, you seek ye first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added to you. Is that right? So the principal thing is putting him first. Not seek me first, but seek him first. But we mostly, it's all about seek me first. And that's why we're last. <laughs> I'm talking about here now on this earth. You follow me? Now the book says that um, sometime when you pray, and most of us don't know what prayer is. You understand what I mean? We know that we're in a war, but I didn't teach you that the war is in prayer. I teach you exactly what Ephesians 6.12 says. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, as ye suppose, but they're mighty through who? Yah, to the pulling down of what? All right, so you got to be able to know what strongholds and how to be able to pull them down. You know that every time that King David went to war, that he would often petition Yahweh in the tabernacle of heaven. Did y'all hear me? He would go and get permission before he would go up and attack an enemy. He asked Yah, he said, shall I go up and attack these Philistines? If he didn't get an answer, he wouldn't go up. Did y'all hear what I said? Yes, sir. If he didn't get an answer, he wouldn't go up. If you pray you don't get an answer, what are you going to do? Go up. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> you get it? Yes, sir. We've been talking about the attitude of the patriarchs. Who would ever thought that yourself would be thrown into a pit, sold like a dog, Put into captivity, started at the lowest point, the offscouring of the earth only to end up being the greatest, the second greatest in all of Egypt, and he wasn't even a Mizrite. You know, many you would never ever attain that because of your attitude. You don't look at captivity as an opportunity to be so righteous that Yah Himself would intervene in your affairs. And what happens is, is we go and we fall off into the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil is murmuring, complaining. I mean, we fast forward all the way over to here. The apostle saw who said that, you know, I thank y'all for all my trials and all my tribulations. All my afflictions. I've been in perils of countrymen. I've been in perils of my own brothers. Been shipwrecked. Beaten. Hungry. Destitute. And in all these, I've learned one thing. Give thanks. Now, it's good for us to be able to clap our hands for Paul, but what about you? Because you ain't learned that yet. That's why you keep repeating the same old thing again and again and again. Y'all going to listen? I'm sorry, but I know that the world tries its best to defy y'all's order and say, we don't need no preacher. But if you didn't hear from a preacher, what would you be at in your faith today? You going to preach? You still be on this shallow in Jesus' name baptism. Preaching the feast days over and over again. 
Huh? Yes, sir. Absolutely true. Talking about what we're supposed to wash with, touch not, taste not, handle not. And as far as your ceiling will go. You get it? Faith come by here. Got to hear the word of God. You hear it? Now, when we look at our petitions, which are also testimonies, our prayers, we still got the residue of Christianity on us. And, and you know, we've tried our best to remove all that from you. You have to know when you're in warfare. Is that right? You need to know when to command. Is that right? Yes, you need to know when to make a petition. All right? We're going to get some focus here today, though, all right? All right, if I'm going to get a little bit of focus here today. Is that okay? See, prayers always seem to address conflict in our lives. Something that is just not quite right. That's what they intended for. Are you following me? And we have to be very careful with our words. There are idle words, words that are mentioned with no thought. Is that right? James told us that sometimes that we don't receive our request and our petition because when we ask, we ask amiss. And we keep forgetting over and over, and over again. Somebody say the word law. law. Does that not imply that there's a legal structure? Is that, does that not imply legal structure? Yes, sir. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Think about it. Truly, yes. Rules, yep. guidelines, mm -hmm. and that law has to be applied properly. I've told y'all many, many times over and over again that Yah is a legalist. Truly. He does things lawfully. He don't do things because of the way that our minds have been formed. Are you following me? He does it after the agenda that he has already set up. You follow me? So when he gives us law, and then he tells us there are three things that will put you on um, the bad side of law. Sin, iniquity, and transgression. We classify everything as sin. We don't call it iniquity and transgression. But each one of them carry its own levels of punishment. Yes, sir. Yes. And Yah is not so much punishing us today like he used to then. See, used to then, if you did something wrong, depending on how you broke the law, would determine your judgment. Yes. You follow me? Yes, one brother over here may do something and die. You may do something and live. Yes, but with a judgment over your head. Are you following me? And somehow we've come to this day today thinking that we're more articulate, we're more uh, knowledgeable and more educated, that we got a better understanding than our ancients. All because of the influence of pagan philosophies, your philosophy, your theology, and their theology. We have not divorced ourselves from the theology and the minds of this world. So that we can learn Christ. That's the whole reason why Paul said I had to, to, to get rid of all that so I could learn Christ. That implies that if you don't get rid of all of that, you're going to have blocks, mind blocks up in front of you. You're going to continue to keep functioning in a certain way. And in functioning that way, there's nothing nobody can do to change that mind of yours. But if you've been praying all this time, you've been making petitions all this time, you've been asking all this time, you still ain't got your answer, then somebody's wrong. Because the book says that if we ask anything according to his will, that there's a key word right there, according to, he will give us our answers. Is that right? Yourself said to Potiphar's wife, he said, how can I do this and sin against my yeah. <clears throat> See, he had the fear of Yah because everybody said, well, the commandments wasn't given until the time of the exit. I said, really? Then what was Yosef doing? 
when he says, I can't sin against y'all. Abraham already had commandments. It's called oral tradition. I want to, I'm going to give you something to pass down the law of y'all. You get it? I'm going to pass it down so that generation after generation will be able to receive these blessings. You understand? How many times, you remember Abraham? When um, he was scared that he was going to lose his wife, lose his life, that he said, tell, hey, wife, come here, uh, uh, tell them, <clears throat> you're my sister. Now, he didn't lie. But he didn't tell the truth either. And you know what? He never did repent of that either. Somebody say the word motive. motive. Now say motives. motives. You, get to, you see the difference? You see the same? I mean motive, motives. What is your motive in things that you do? Because not only that, Isaac turns around and repeats the very same thing that Abraham did. As the old proverbial saying go modern day that gives us all this summer wisdom in all the world, the apple don't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> you are a product not only of your family, mind, family line, but you're also a product of your environment. You get it? So we're going to learn a lot today. I hope so. If you don't learn nothing, I'll learn something. I'll listen to myself. But I promise you, I am not one as beat of the air. I know exactly what I'm talking about and what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Now to get you to understand and comprehend. You follow me? Because remember, I'm wrong until you get it. And going to be wrong until you get it. And then when you get it, guess who had to endure all the indignities and insults? And the, the communication of the mind without force of breath. Shemaine's watching. There's a court up there. You know that, right? Today, court is adjourned. Does that mean it starts or it ends? Okay, let's open the court. Court is in session. Pow! <laughs> court is in session. I used to have a wooden gavel back here. I guess somebody says, we tired of this court stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People are upset because we do not read the scriptures from an English mindset. The Bible was not written in Greek or English. The author were Hebrews. Therefore, the scriptures must be viewed through the lenses of Hebrews, not an English man. In Abarim 12:22, but you all come to Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living what? Yeah. Now let's stop for a second. You hear the way it's already talking? Do you hear the way it's already talking? There's a city up there. You hear that? Which one's more real, the natural or the spiritual? And what are you? Your spirit. Your spiritual. You follow me? Think about this now. The heavenly Jerusalem. So, since we're Israelites in exile to Yah here on this earth, where's our government at then? It's in heaven. Isn't that right? Is that right? What happens to us is since we don't see naturally, we don't believe that there's a government up there. And as backwards as we are, we feel natural man's government. I mean, after all, there's a whole bunch of governments in this world. Which one's right? <laughs> Which one do you serve? I mean, our citizenship is where? In Shemaim. But do you really live like that? Do you function like that? To an innumerable company of messengers, angels. You hear that? There's a lot going on. To the entire gathering, assembly of, and church of the firstborn, I could have did a little better, which are enrolled, where's your enrollment at? Amen. Notice, he, you here, but he's talking about your enrollment is up here. Huh? And to, somebody say the next phrase. 
Y'all the what? Judge. We never, ever approach him as judge. We approach him as father. Isn't that right? Sometimes, some of us have a revelation of what Abba means. If you don't, we'll cover it. All right? We don't even approach him as Abba. Approach him as father. You follow me? We don't all ever approach him as judge. How many times do you hear me talk about adjudicating matters? Y'all hear? The judge, Yah, the judge of who? All and to the spirits of who? That's talking about us. See, we're, being, we're in the process of being made perfect. Where you're at right now, that's about as perfect as you are, but there's still more room to grow. Different, total different mindset. You listening? And to Yahshua, the, the, Yahshua is the what? The mediator of a new what? The mediator of a what? New covenant. New covenant. And to the blood of what? Sprinkling. Y'all make sure y'all pay attention to this right here. The blood of sprinkling. Yes, that speaketh better things than that of what? Hey. Now wait a minute. What that got to do with anything? Think about that for a second. We, we got finished talking about all of heaven. And then all of a sudden we hear the new covenant and the blood of sprinkling that speak of better things than that of what? Amen. What's Abel got to do with anything? Well, we're going to find out. Because over in Baptist Sheet or Genesis 4-3, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain bought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto who? And Abel... He also bought of the firstlings of his, what did he bring? Firstlings of his flock. Do you have in mind every, the first fruit of everything you got? Do it belong to y'all? Or does it belong to the bill collector? No, I need to ask that for real. Because you got all kinds of people out here that got false doctrines and tell you that you don't have to give offerings, you don't have to tie and all this other stuff, but I'm telling you what they're doing is cursing you. Well, we'll get to it. Y'all make sure that, that, that uh, if your brain tries to lapse, go back there and run in place. Don't pass out on us either. And of the fat thereof, and Yahweh had, what kind of, what is that word? Respect Unto and to his what? Not, not only but to Abel, but also to his. Not only to Abel, but unto his, also his. Abel came the right way in order for y'all to be able to receive him and his offering. But unto Cain and his. Y'all hear this? He had not what? Now. You know today that there's many type of offers we give. We, you know, we can bring the sacrifice of what? Praise. That's an offering, isn't it? Isn't that right? But what if you're trying to bring a sacrifice of praise with a heavy heart? Is heaven really receiving that offering? Wouldn't that be a, a defiled offering? Well, I'm trying to press through. You should have pressed through before you start off in praise. Uh-oh. Yeah, you should have got yourself right before you even offer praise. Who saw offer praise glorifies me. Y'all hear it? And Cain was very what? He got mad because y'all didn't have any respect to his now somebody out of order. I don't think y'all's out of order. I think Cain's out of order. In other words, you meet his conditions, come on his terms, he will respect you 
and your offering. Y'all hear this? Everybody listening? And his countenance fell. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why are you angry? And why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, shalt thou not be accepted? How many times you prayed when you was angry? Expecting for heaven to open up your understanding. You still in the same place. Oh, we're going we to go deep sea diving today. This right now, we're still treading water. Some of y'all think we already went 10 feet. <laughs> we still treading water. Hallelujah. Y'all better pay attention to this. Really? Are y'all praying while you're sitting here listening that, you're, that, that Father have mercy on your mind? Now, let me go ahead and get offenses out of the way so a war won't be on you. If you think that I'm personally talking to you, raise your hand. If you don't think I'm personally talking to you, raise your hand. Good, I'm talking to every one of you. So that you don't mess it up. I'm here to get into every last one of your ass with this word. So now you can go ahead and have the right to be offended. So if a spirit come, say, you know he talking to you. Agree quickly with your adversary. We got that out of the way already, right? See, now, the, now you, you don't have to give place to the devil. You can submit yourself to y'all now. He, oh, he already told me a four time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you do us not well, if you do what? Not Sin life at the what? Door. The door is the door of your heart. Yes. And unto thee shall be his God. and thou shalt rule over him. In other words, can you will still have your position? And in your place is the eldest brother. And Cain talked with Abel. After he got finished talking with y'all, okay? His brother. Look to your left. Say, my brother. My brother. Look to your right. Say, my brother. my brother. Now, sisters, you look to your left. Say, my sister. <laughs> look to your right. Now, now, some of you don't even know your left from your right. <laughs> Say, my sister. That's a shame, boy, people doing this. <laughs> which, one, which, one, which one is it? Father, we rebuke that spirit of confusion right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> if I had a camera up here. <laughs> it came talk with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field. That Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and he did what? Slew him, Slew him meaning he killed him. And Yahweh said unto Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's what? That, now he got sarcasm in here. See, he's answering from an angry spirit. I want you to see how authority approaches this. Just because you angry don't mean they get angry with you. You see his attitude towards y'all? They wouldn't have not been being a smart ass. He see, I told you, y'all intervened in the affairs of men at the at the beginning of the zenith of this thing. Yes, he did too. And look at how man talks to him when he's upset. Are y'all hearing this? This is how he talked to the creator universe, the one who made him. And he said, what have you done? The voice, key word, the what? Voice. The voice of thy brother's 
So blood has a voice. Blood has a and thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Y'all hear this? Yes, In other words, his blood is talking to me up here. His blood, which was shed unjustly, is now talking to me. Ah, blood don't talk. See, there you go again. You, there you go in your little natural realm. Right, yeah, right. Thank you. You know everything. Yes. Right. But the book says that yes. the voice of your brother's blood. So blood has a voice. Blood has a voice. Blood has a voice. Cry unto me from the ground. In other words, the blood has a voice that speaks. Yes. And we're going to spend some time focusing on overcoming and having our requests answered before we are. So let's focus on precision in here to the best of our ability. Now, the reason why I throw that in there, because your ability may be hampered. It may be hindered because of an offense that you've been previously carrying around for years. You get it? Let's go all the way to Hazum. Revelations 12.10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our what? Yah. And the power of his what? Messiah. Now didn't Yahshua say it is finished? And then he said that, that um, his kingdom is within us? And we be thinking if his kingdom is in us, then why ain't everything on this earth operating like it does in the kingdom then? You want to tell you the reason why? Because we don't pray, your kingdom be done in me. Your will be done in me. As it is in heaven, so let it be done in earth. You don't pray like it. You don't talk like that. Because your kingdom is in the way. <laughs> oh yeah, you'd like to do thy will, oh y'all, huh? I'm sorry, but there ain't no death in the kingdom. No hatred. No discord. Y'all hear this? And the power of his Messiah. For the. What's that word? For the what? Of our what? Is cast down which accused them before Yah. Remember I told you that. Man when you go read the, the account of Job. It pretty much gives you an account of what's going on. Ain't nothing changed for us that. He still has to get accused. He still has, he has a legal right. To be able to accuse you. We just don't know what the word accuse mean. We think accuse mean talking about somebody. Oh, okay. And they overcame him by the. That's one. Somebody say one. And the word of their. Two. And they loved not their. Unto death. See, that's the problem right here. We got too much love of our. And we're supposed to be dying daily, but not we ain't got, we ain't got that much love. Uh-oh. To die to my will? My way? So I can walk in the way? No, no. I love my life. That's why I'm not dying. But these people love not their lives, and they took Pleasure in dying. Therefore rejoice you heavens. And you that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he had brother what? 
short time. And we, we think that Ur been around a long time. Not when a day with the most high is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. He up there floating around. Ain't been nothing but a few days of him. I think it's grace that he can give you 60, 70, 80, 90 years to figure this thing out. And most people won't even take it. Number one, we overcome by the what? Blood of the Lamb. Number two, by the what? Word of our testimony. And you know what? And this is where you need to learn how to talk. Not just coming up uttering any foolish old words. I mean, we talk that way among ourselves. Do you think we can just utter our mind and all our mind to y'all? Just say things the way we want to say? Number three, and they love not their lives unto the what? So, our biggest problem today is, if the blood of Abel cries out, is not the blood of Jesus greater? Huh? Was it not shed? So that means his blood has a voice as well. Y'all hear? Is he not a mediator of a better covenant? Does he not live to forever to make intercession for the saints? Does he not? Somebody say defense attorney. That's what Yahshua is. He already paid a retainer. And he's representing you by the state of Jerusalem. Rest of you go back to sleep. Don't let me destroy your utopia. Number one, we do not apply the blood of Messiah properly in prayer. You need to know that. Number two, we are tricked out of the word of our testimony and it becomes powerless in heaven because we accuse our brothers and our sisters just like Satan accuses us. Somebody say, how does this work? Well, glad you ask. Glad you ask. You see, all throughout the scriptures, the prophets give us instructions on behavior and attitude. Is that right? And we see it over and over and over again repeated. You follow me? Especially in Yes, EIU 58. Y'all hates the putting forth of the finger. Is that right? Is that right? He hates him that sow of discord among the brother. And you have to do all that by using your mouth. You follow me? So. When you go to Shemaim in prayer, you make your petition before Yah. There's the adversary sitting there. Right when Yah wants to grant it, he can't. Because the adversary going, ah, 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 hold on. They with their own mouth accuse their brothers. And your honor, you know it's the truth. They just did it today. You sitting there saying, y'all sure you my defense attorney, say something. He's saying, I can't say nothing until you understand your case first. I need some information. And you can't give him the information. Well, I tell you what, you go before the judge like this, <laughs> you will be in prison. Uh-oh. Y'all hear this? See, I was going to wait to preach this next week. 
I figure he'll give us some more. See, so every time that uh, <clears throat> you, you've been praying, and we love singing the songs, somebody's praying, and you get to praying, and whoa, all you get is a feeling. But boy, <laughs> by the time you get up there to Shemaim, Satan is standing right there. Ah! And y'all being a just judge, he said, it's right. You know the reason why it's right? Because you don't know how to talk to your defense attorney to stand in the gap for you. You don't. You get up there and where well, he says, well, tell me the whole story. What's the first thing you start doing? Lying. <laughs> he can't represent you. He not like these bootlickers down here that take bribes. He said, I tell you what, we'll make an appointment for another time. <laughs> Next, <laughs> go on in here. <laughs> you still praying five years later. Still ain't got the answer. <laughs> Number three, we love our lives too much than to die to this nasty will. If they could just see it my way. No, 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 no. No, y'all should have said I am the way. So it means there's only one way. Nobody wants to see it your way. Do you want everybody to see things your way? The blood of Jesus is speaking for us today. The blood gives y'all the legal right to forgive our sins. Oh, hold on though. But there's some prerequisites for that though. There's some conditions. That have to be met. There's some confessions. That have to be made. Before you can receive the. <clears throat> mercy of the court. To rule in your favor. God loves it when he gives a verdict in your favor, but he can't give it to you when you're still operating in Satan's kingdom. We all know about Yom Kippur, right? Day of Atonement. See, Haran, right after Yah had just got finished killing Haran's sons, Haran's sons, he spoke to Moshe and gave Aaron some instructions. And he told Aaron, he said, I want you to go and kill a bull. And I want you to not only atone for yourself, but atone for your house and his nation. You the high priest. Now I'm going to give you some goats. And I want these goats right here, one of them is going to be sacrificed. But the other one is going to have sins confessed over its head and it's going to be let go into the wilderness, set free. Now, in truth is, the one that's set free is the one that deserves to be on sacrifice. But, but the one that's sacrificed is the one that don't deserve this, but he stood in your place. You get it? But he stood in your place. See, you can't preach this to Christians because they'd be, huh? I want you to bring the blood of the sacrifice and the blood of the bull and I want you to present yourself before me. You uh, go through the veil and sprinkle the blood. Seven times on the altar. Do the same thing with the blood of the goat. When you get finished, go out to the altar. And then put the blood on the horns of the altar. And as for this goat, let him go. 
That's why he said in Psalms 40 and Hebrews 10, Behold, I come in the volume of the book, for it is written of me. See, when Yahshua laid his life down, there was no more temporary forgiveness. You see, each and every year, we had to atone for our sins. And, but they were only covered up year by year. You get that? Now, what happens to our sins as a nation if there's no temple, there's no high priest to perform the service? We go off into lawlessness and iniquity. We're no better than the nations. You get it? Each year, our ancient people had to appear before the Most High to atone for their sins. The high priest will perform the services of the temple. Now, Jesus is our high priest. He, his blood, atoned for our sins. It's he that is standing in as the defense lawyer. See, that's why, now notice, notice, every time, you know, Y'all said I'm the only one that can forgive sins, right? Yes. So every time, you know, how, you ever heard this before? When I see the blood, yes. I will what? Yes. Pass over you. But he has to be able to do what? See the blood. Yes. So what's being said? Y'all sure can't speak for you and talk for you. Remember, the blood has a voice. You come to him, you come the wrong way. You still hiding things. You got a bad motive. You're self-justified. Uh-huh. And he can't speak for you so that y'all can see the blood and pass over you. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear this? Yes, That's why when we come to him, we have to come to him with a clean heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we come to him, we have to come in a right yes, spirit. Yes, right. Y'all hear this? Yes, sir. When Satan accuses us, it is because he has a case against us. He's not just sitting. Remember, I told you. Go into those gospels. Go into the message and see when Satan ever lied. Y'all hear that? I told you what he does. What he does is hold the truth in unrighteousness. You follow me? See, so we as the assembly that is seated in heavenly places. We have got to learn how to approach Yah and approach him his way so that our prayers can be answered. Because while Satan is sitting up here accusing us and he's justified, you keep praying, nothing ain't happening. You keep asking, nothing is coming to pass. You know why? Because you're cleaning your own eyes. You're right in your own eyes. There's some shit you covering up. There are some things you ain't come clean with. And that's why you still keep dealing with the same thing. That's why you keep praying. You keep asking me. You make a petition. You send a request. You never get your answer. Because you didn't come with a clean heart. You didn't come with a right spirit. You didn't even ask to be renewed. So if you want an answer, you got to come with a clean heart. You got to come in a right spirit. So that you can be renewed. Y'all hear this? And what that does. Is that it gives access. For the blood of Yahshua. To speak for us. And Yah sees the testimony of that blood. And then he says. Guess what Satan? Shut up. Slaps the gavel down and said, you can have your request. (laughs) 
But conditions have to be met. Did y'all hear me? Got to be met. Now, if your mind is not renewed, if it's not changed, do you think you're going to know how to talk? Huh? You think you're going to know how to speak? Uh, when we go to Jesus the judge, the Father rules on our behalf. Because of the price that has already been paid by Yeshua. The key of breaking Satan's power over us is approaching the judge the right way. Is he not the advocate? The Lamb of Yah? The shepherd and bishop of our souls? The high priest? The door? Huh? The living water? Is he not all this? Is anybody understanding me? Am I preaching to myself in here today? Huh? The high priest? Yes, sir. Yes. The judge? Yes, sir. See, we cannot speak for ourselves, but Jesus, his blood. Remember, he ever liveth to make an intercession for us. You hear that? His whole soul purpose of reigning is just to make intercession for us. It has to speak for us because without our mediator, we are guilty before y'all. Y'all hear me? Satan has a hard case against us. So we need to learn how to ask and remove legal grounds. How many times we talk about that? Remove legal grounds. How many times we talking about that? Remove legal grounds from him so that our prayers can be answered. See, there's a whole lot more going on. We making a bunch of noise, but ain't, ain't too many prayers getting answered. We're not coming correct. Some of us trying to hide behind our iniquity. Stay under a cloak of maliciousness. Fly under the radar perception. Using bad motives to deceive people. Lying to get our way. Thinking we've got our answer. And heaven is still brass. Our prayers are not being answered because we are self-righteous. You see, some of you think Yah. Some of you should think Yah that somebody on this earth knows how to pray for some of you hard-headed people. Because a lot of times you're getting some of these prayer requests not because you pray, but because somebody else prayed. You pray when you're sick, and then when that don't work, the Bible says if there's any sick among you, let them call for the what? Yeah. Elders of the church. Yeah. They're going to anoint your head with oil and pray. Is that right? Yeah. And what are they going to do? They're going to pray what? The prayer of what? Yeah. Faith. Because yes, you don't know how. Amen. And I submit to you that sickness, not just the common cold, there's such thing as common, okay? But grave sickness. Sickness, are you following me? I submit to you that that is an, a pure example of the devil getting placed to wreak havoc on you. You get it? All the promises in the book of mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. Did he not say in Exodus 15, 26? If you know how to make your petition to me, that I will heal your diseases. Yes, he did too. Yes, he did too. That's what he said. Hebrews 7, 17 says, For he testified, you are a priest forever after the order of what? I mean, there's already an established order set up. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. You know the reason why? Spotless. Blameless. Pure, sanctified, set apart. You get it? There was no sin that could taint the altar. And they truly were many priests. 
There wasn't a whole bunch of them. Because they were not suffered to continue by reason of what? Death. Death. They lived out their days, their time of year, and then they died. But this man, because he continued ever having an unchangeable priesthood. There ain't going to be no more priest but Jesus. That's it. When you get to glory, that's all you're going to see is Jesus. Are you following me? And people say, well, I did everything. everything's done changed. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. The program is still in place. It's just that you don't know how to apply it. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the what? Uttermost that come unto Yah by. Yeah. You can't go him your way. You can't come to him in front just for yourself. No, you got to come his way. Seeing that he liveth. To make up intercession for yeah. sole purpose of what? Living. He said, behold, I'm the one that was dead and now look, now I'm alive forevermore. Yeah. You get that? And he tells us in his word, he is not the Yah of the dead, but the Yah of the living. For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners, made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those old-fashioned ancient high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once. When he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests. Which have infirmity. But the word of the oath. Which was since the law. Maketh the son. Who is consecrated forevermore. He set apart solely for this. For your redemption. For your atonement. His whole purpose right now. Y'all getting it? So when he said it is finished, he's, he's basically telling you it is finished that the accuser is going to continue to keep accusing the brother. Y'all getting this? Adversary. Adversary. First Peter 5 8 says, Be sober and do what? Watch. The King James says, Vigilant, but it means watch. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may what? Devour. Devour. Now, the instructions are don't you listen? Resist him. Firm in the what? Belief. Knowing that the same hardships are experienced by your what? Brotherhood in the what? You're not alone in this. You ain't by yourself. You ain't the only one suffering. Don't think you're unique and you're all by yourself. Now let's look at this word adversary. Did y'all hear what I said? We're going to look at this word, adversary. That's the Greek number 40, 476. And it means antidikos. Means, look, an adversary is an opponent in a lawsuit. Satan has a lawsuit against us. An adversary means this is someone that is resisting you because he has a lawsuit against you. You get that? He's the plaintiff. An arch enemy or adversary. See, lawsuits take place where? In courts. You can't sit up there and fight somebody on a field of battle when you got to settle it in the court first. Does it make sense? 
The cops, they don't come out here and warn you until they first go to the judge and get a warrant for your arrest. That's natural. If they came to this door talking about we're going to take you in and they ain't got no paperwork, you'll tell them to kiss your ass. Well, some of you just probably walk right in, but for me, that's what they're going to get. <laughs> you get it? 2 Kings 21.5 says this. And he built altars for, the, for all the hosts of heaven in the what? Two courts of the houses of Yahweh. Psalms 84 verse 2 says, My soul longeth, yea, fainteth for the courts of Yahweh. You know why? Because that's where I'm going to get justice. That's where I'm going to be righteous. That's why I can plead my case. And since I have the greatest defense lawyer in the universe. <laughs> ain't never lost a case. Ain't never lost a case. <laughs> huh? How does it go? Well. You go up there, you go, um, y'all sure? I need you to represent me. Well, what you done done? Well, I, man, I've been, man, I'm t boy, I did something bad. Uh, I mean, man, I'm not even sure if, if the judge will let me go. <laughs> he says, but tell me what it is. I, I, I'm ashamed. If you can't tell me what it is, I can't plead your case. <laughs> Somebody say confess with your mouth. <laughs> huh? Hallelujah. And then he says, uh, now do you believe I can handle this? Uh, somebody say believe. believe. And you go, oh, uh, well, uh, uh, no, 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 no. Let's get this right. I need for you to believe I can handle this. Let me give you a little blessed assurance. There's not a case that I have ever had that I've ever lost. Huh? I deal with that jack leg on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, but what about them people I just seen just went out? Now, that's called a continued case. We, we got some more stuff we got to bring out first. Because I can't present a faulty judgment to the judge and expect for him to make a verdict on your behalf when you hold not on me. <laughs> yeah. Don't you worry. I know how to present the case. I just need you to come clean with me. I'll do the talking for you. All you got to do is stand. <laughs> Huh? Just stand. Well, what, 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 what happened to them? They had to go get some lawns girded with truth. Then I told them they'd come back. <laughs> I told them to come back, then I'll talk for them. Is anybody with me in here? Then? We still getting to the answer now. See, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of Yahweh. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living Yahweh. David said to Helium 84 10, For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I had rather. Be a doorkeeper in the house of my Yah than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You know what he's saying? You want me to interpret that? For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a bailiff in the house of my Yah.
What does the bailiff do? He keeps over the court. The judge just gives the, the verdict. The bailiff makes sure everybody stays in order. Is that right? I'm trying to flip this thing now to a spirit because some of y'all sitting here, huh? I'm like, are you serious? Y'all don't feel the Ruach all in this place, man. I mean, I mean, he helping us. Man, he helping us. Psalms 96, verse 8. Give unto, let me give unto Yahweh the glory due to his name. And bring and and come into his what? Don't come empty handed. Somebody say, I ain't got nothing to offer. Then bring yourself. (laughs) Y'all hearing this? See, giving righteously is very important to y'all. Let me give you an example, all right? Back to Job. Y'all remember Job? We're going to cover Job extensively, right? We're going to cover him just a little bit more. We're going a little bit farther, all right? Job 1.1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. Now, mind you, we already know Job's condition, right? Just how the father view you. They view you as perfected in Christ. It's just that. Let me see if y'all can remember this. By the deeds of the flesh can no man be justified. You getting that? You begin to understand this thing a little bit more. Yeah. And there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feareth and ensued. He spurned it, stole the stick away, ran away from it. And there was born unto him seven sons and three daughters. And Job knew how wicked his sons and daughters were. Somebody say, I know how wicked my children are. Now, we ain't telling y'all to look at y'all children with a, with a third eye of wickedness now. All right, we just, just, Job knew their conditions. I said Job knew their condition. He ain't like us today. We give passes for all the wicked ass children. When they messing up Job, uh-uh. Uh, he knew how wicked it was. Let me tell you how I know he knew how wicked it was. How many want to know? Good. Keep following me then today. We're going to go down. So what did he do? He tried to give an offering. He tried to give an offering. See, he knew how to meet y'all's conditions. He knew how to come before him. Don't during the feast days we have to bring an offering? Are you following me? But he said he knew how to come before him. He says, I know how to get in touch with y'all because I done done this many times before. Now I'm going to make intercession for these wicked sons and daughters, so I'm going to bring an offering. So, that his wicked children would be what? Covered. From judgment and death. Verse 4. And his sons went and Feasted in their houses, everyone his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so that when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them. In other words, he prayed for them. He made a petition for them. Uh, that's what he did, right? And rose up early in the morning and he what? Offered a what? Burnt, burnt offering. For what? That's the only time you offer burnt offerings for sins. He's trying to stand in the gap. He's hoping if I just go ahead and give y'all this offering right here and go make this sacrifice, then who knows? Maybe he'll be merciful with them. Because they're wicked. You know, I love for them to be saved. Love for them to be redeemed. Love for them to be delivered. Uh uh-huh. love for them too. According to the number of them all. See, Job just didn't do it. He made a sacrifice according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have what? Sin. What? Sin. And curse Yah in their what? Hearts. Thus did Job, not just once, 
He did this all the time. He's trying to persuade and he's trying to change y'all's mind through his righteousness. We know the story, so let's recap a little. Verse 11, but to put forth by hand now, remember, Satan is up there before the Most High and said, you, just, you got a big old hedge built up around Job. Move your hand and all that he had and touch all that he had. Just allow me to touch whatever he got and he will curse you to your face. The accusation is, you've got a hedge built up around him, and the only reason why he served him is because of the blessings that he continued to keep receiving from you and the protection. You made him the richest man in all the earth. It's easy to talk good about you when he's blessed and, and all his blessings are running over. What about when if I strip everything from him? Let's see how he talked then. See, you got a lot of things going on in life that you gave in place to the devil to accuse you. And you think hardships and annoyances are coming up on you because you exist. No, you're not. Uh-uh. 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 You could be still blinded to your ways or something you've done years ago. Uh-oh. And Yahweh said, 12 verse, under Satan, behold, all that he had is in thy, in what? In your what? Power, Power only upon him what? Himself. Put forth, put, uh, put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of God. Woo! What did he do? He got permission. Yeah. Satan got permission to torment you. He got permission to afflict you. And you still justify yourself. What, what's wrong? What'd you do? Isn't that the same story went through with Job? Yes, you read the story, teach how to be friends too. The right way. Teach how not to be like them three. <laughs> Permission for the adversary. Verse 13. And there was a day when his sons... And his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their, house, in their eldest brother's house. Now, let me ask you a question. Who comes but to steal, kill, and destroy? Satan, Satan does. So what had happened then after Satan flowed, I mean, he left the presence of Yah, what happened? The Sabaeans stole all his oxen. Killed Job's servants that was watching the oxen. <laughs> fire! He said, the fire of God! So all you wicked people, I just stop blaming all these hurricanes, typhoons and tsunamis, earthquakes on y'all. It's Satan doing all that. Don't the thief come on up with a steal, kill, and destroy? Huh? What happened to Puerto Rico? Did he not steal, kill, and destroy? Y'all didn't do that. Satan did because all the, all the hell and sin that is there. And he always beating up Florida. Florida got to be the most wicked state in the, next to California, man. They, they get hammered every, that whole, the East Coast got to be really bad. Yeah, yeah. Look at y'all. It's true. It's true. It's true. Fire burned up his sheep and his servants from heaven. Fire did. The child then stole his camels and killed his servants. Verse 18. While he was yet speaking, there came in also another and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a what? Great whirlwind. A great wind from the what? Wilderness. And smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped to tell you. See, what was going on? Well, Joel rose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and he did what? Worship. Worship. So what happened? Why did all this come up on a righteous man? You see? You see what I'm saying? See, why all this happened to a man of Yah? Why? 
projected fears, and offerings of bribes. Rather than reproving them, rebuking them. Getting their ass out of your house to not bring a curse upon your home. You trying to bribe y'all with offerings to keep them. And because you justify the wicked, all your substance is taken away from you. See, nobody see this. There was a high priest, a judge that wouldn't even reprove his sons. Let them run carte blanche all through Israel. Uh oh. Where in there did we read anywhere that he reproved them or rebuke them or correct them? See, you, you ain't going to do that crap in my house. I'm putting your ass out. Yes, sir. You remember I told you how much we guard this community to keep sin away from us? Yes, sir. Let me tell you all something. You get anybody, especially young teenagers, that want to go tap dance around with sin and shit, you put them out. Since they big and grown, get their ass out for a curse come up on you. In this case right here, look what Satan had access to do. Take all this substance. And he is still offering offerings until the father trying to bribe y'all. See, we forget that these people in the book were men and women just like us. Of like passion faith. So we read it. We put them up with a halo around their head. Think they don't got all these problems either like we do. They are written so that we can learn. Y'all hear this? And the Bible says he kept on offering. Saints, you had better get your wicked hearts right concerning these children. Do not allow them to cause you to sin against Yah by hiding behind righteous deeds done unlawfully. Uh oh. Oh, the Holy Spirit's still here. He's still here. He ain't left yet. Over in 325, for the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which is afraid of has come unto me. Well, what did he greatly fear? Well, he feared that his sons and his daughters would curse God. So he stood in the gap to make offerings and intercessions for them and kept on doing it. But they were unrepentant. Uh-oh. I remember, accuser, anti-dekos. Mean anti mean which to deny. They mean the adversary is there to deny. The accuser is there what? To deny. And then it's two words. Anti decos. Anti which means to deny. And then the decos means right. So the accuser is there to deny you your rights. Y'all hear that? And as long as Satan has legitimate accusations against us, he can legally deny you your right of deliverance and freedom. Yes, and because you do not know how to plead your case in heaven, the judge cannot rule in your favor. Yes. And your prayers continue to go unanswered. Yes. And Satan is using his accusations against us to deny what is rightfully ours. Jesus died to give us the victory, then why don't we have it in certain areas of our life? Because of legal grounds. The things you refuse to receive. Things you refuse to correct. Huh? Y'all hearing? Revelation 12, 10 says, for the uh, accuser. The one who is in place to deny us our legal right. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's cast down which accused him before y'all day and night. Now, there it is. He is in a law. He has a lawsuit against us. Yes, because of something you've transgressed in. Yes, don't tell me you don't know. Well, I prayed. I don't know. Damn it. The heart knows his own bitterness. Yes. Don't you give me that crap. You can't see it because you've been protecting it. You've been insulating it so long. Adversary against one in the assembly that is 
a complainant at law. That's what Satan is. He sits in the assembly as an adversary. So Satan is accusing us and he is bringing a complaint against us in the judicial system of heaven. So a lot of hell we are experiencing here and now is because somewhere in our lives we are blinded to ourselves. You try to, somebody try to come and help you on, first thing you do is start justifying. They don't speak your language, you put up a wall. Satan has legal position against us, and we need to learn how to silence him. Learn how to silence him from accusing us before the judge. Y'all in heaven. Praying right. Israel, you need to know that the blood of Jesus testifies against Satan. And his accusations, look, he could have a legitimate case against us simply because we are guilty. Because we're born in sin. Shaping in iniquity. But Yahshua came to remove Every guilt and stain. Let us remember the book. The book says in Hebrew that if we sin willfully. After that we have received the knowledge of the truth. When? After that we receive the knowledge of the truth. There remain of no more sacrifices of sin but a certain fearful and judgment. And a fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. That's what it says. You hear that? Yes, sir. Only if you know how to approach him for forgiveness. So that the accusation can become void because the blood has what? Covered, Covered you. See, not only when you come the right way, you come the correct way, you pray, you make your petition before Yahshua the right way. His blood not only covers, but it wipes the slate totally clean. So when you stand before the Father, because your defense attorney said, hold on for a second, I want you to put something on. What is it? There you go. That's the blood right there. Now you're ready to go up in front of the judge. They don't plead your case in the courtroom, and now you sitting up there drip, dropping with blood, and, and the judge and the accuser say, I, I, and the judge goes, oh, I see the blood. You good, Pastor. You're gone. See ya. Not so you can go out and be wicked again. Because you don't want to frustrate the grace of Yah. You hear that? Matter of fact, just because you got that, sin no more. You should be able to walk and dance and scream and shout, never to revisit that again. Maybe you haven't been through enough hell yet. Maybe that's it. Surely oppression will make a wise man mad. Maybe you haven't been through enough yet. Maybe you haven't grown tired and weary yet. Huh? Maybe you love the sickness of this iniquity. Huh? Is that the reason why we repeat offenders? See, the eternal prison is hell. Separation from Yah. Ain't nothing but the righteous going in that kingdom. First yes, John 1.8, if we say that we have no sin, yes. in other words, you don't even confess it. Even when you don't say anything and then you justifying it, you are actually saying we don't have no sin. Even when you continue in wickedness, you are actually saying, not me, I'm not guilty, I don't have no sin. And what you're doing is when you refuse to acknowledge that, you're making Yah a liar and he cannot lie. Yes, sir. You call him a very low and unjust system. Wow. You're looking for amendments to feed you. Yeah. It says we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins. 
He is what? Faithful and just. If you come clean. If you come naked. Yo, here it is. He is faithful and what? Righteous. To forgive us of our sins and to do what? Cleanse all unright. He can't set up there and cleanse you when there ain't no confession. Because confession with the mouth comes unto salvation. Some of you can't confess because you're too embarrassed. Huh? You still, you painting a picture amongst this fleshly world like you something. When you are nothing. You're deceiving yourself. You want everybody to see this kind of picture over here, but you really are a big old stain. Huh? Hallelujah. So you got to get to that. Because he can cleanse you of all un. See that blood never loses his power. That's why I say we ought to thank Yah <laughs> that Jesus came. Because we all be vegetarians today. That wouldn't be a damn thing to sacrifice. <laughs> all the animals be dead because all the sin is going on in this earth. Especially yours. You would have took half of them. Running around here looking like skeletons. We ain't got no meat. <laughs> See, a Christian can't explain it. Can't, you, look, you, you cannot explain this to a Christian. Yeah, you can't do this covenant. <laughs> they, they are bound by a lawless, iniquitous doctrine. And theology. They can't understand this. Where did Jesus come? Oh, he come to save me. From what? He come to save me. Well, in the natural, it's hard to break through what we see because it's a natural reality. But prophesying that these dead bones can live is to speak that which cannot be seen in a life. You remember, you remember y'all told Yezekiel, yeah, yeah. prophesy to these bones. And they'll live, but they, they prophesy to them so that they'll live. You follow me? We're trying to prophesy to you this morning, Israel, oh house of Israel, so that you will live. He said, I looked down, I seen a valley of dead bones. Yo, can these dead bones live? <laughs> can they be made alive? Can they be filled with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all need to read that story, man. Encourage you. It's in Ezekiel 37, man. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. Do I have many positions? Yes, I do. But yet I'm still what? One man. To some, I'm a shepherd. To some, I'm a brother. And to some, I'm a friend. To some, I'm a father. And to some, I'm a judge. How you approach me determines your answer. Now, I'm just using that for the natural. See, because I'm not a pastor to everyone. Only those who Yah sends to me. Because you receive me, you receive a righteous man reward. Ain't that what the book says? We're not righteous because we declare ourselves righteous. We're righteous because he is righteous. He's righteous. And, and we're righteous when we exalt his law, when we keep his commandments. When we do that, we're saying he's right and the world is wrong. 
And then God, Yah, views us as righteous. You get it? See, because you receive me, you receive the benefits of knowledge, healing, and deliverance. Who you listen to is very important in his life. Second Corinthians 9, 1 says, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have not seen Jesus Christ our Messiah? Are not ye my work in the Messiah? See, everybody that listens to me, you are my work in the Messiah. If I be not an apostle, Paul said, unto what? Others, but yet doubtless I am to who? You. So what other people out there don't care? I, I don't care. You see what I mean? I don't believe he's the pastor. Well, he ain't to you, but he is to me. <laughs> you see what I mean? That same thing Paul was saying. For the seal of my what? Apostleship is in the what? Are you in the Messiah? I didn't gain you by unjust means. By the word. I'm jealous with you over godly jealousy. Because I have espoused you to one husband. Even unto Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. So knowing how to approach the Father is the key. Yahshua gave us the answers. How to pray the right way and, and what way to direct our prayers. You see, Romans 8, 15 says, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of what? Adoption, whereby we cry. Abba. Abba what? Father. Galatians 4, 6 says, and because ye are sons, y'all have sent forth his spirit of his sons into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. See, this is why the Aramaic term Abba is used, which is equivalent to daddy in the English, a term of endearment. See, when we approach the Father as Abba, we are looking for affection. We're looking for fondness. We're looking for tenderness. We're looking for warmth and loving care. See, Yahshua used this approach even in his trial when, when, when it was time for him to be impaled. But he said, nevertheless. See, look what he said in Mark 14, 36. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take Away this cup from me. He, he was petitioning. Daddy. Nevertheless. Not what I will but thy will. And then in Luke 11 too. And he said unto them. When ye pray. We hear. We said all that to get to this point. Are you awake? Well I read this before pastor. Shut up. When ye pray, say, our what? Father, Father which is what? Hallowed be your what? Name. When he's saying hallowed be your name, you're extolling him. Yeah. Our Father, as magnificent and wonderful as you are. The just counselor that you are. You get that? I pray that what? Your kingdom come. Your will be done as it is where? In heaven. Where at? So in earth. So the first type of prayer is approaching him as what? Father. Now father's a little bit different than Abba. You follow me? Father's a supplier. Is that right? Father's a counselor. You don't approach him as Abba in certain instances when you're praying. Looking for affection and tenderness. and oh, You know what I'm talking about. So, so, Sometimes it feel like you're alone and stuff. And you just say, man, I just need to talk to daddy. And you go to prayer. And you're just looking for a touch. Just some anointing. You're looking for that quickening spirit. You're looking for that quickening spirit to bear witness. You're looking for that anointing that breaks yokes. 
You stay there a little while. And you go, whoa. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daddy. And you right back on strengthen again. That's Abba. That's Abba. That's Abba. We you come to him, we want a hug. We you want to cuddle a little bit. That's Abba. When you come to him as father, you asking for stuff. Huh? Ain't no cuddling in this. <laughs> oh, Dad, I'm old enough now. <clears throat> uh, you think you think I could uh, go get my license? Uh, what, boy? Oh, uh, <clears throat> Dad, I need a uh, hundred dollars uh, for what? As father. <laughs> Why, why are we getting excited about our, but we ain't excited about Father, man? Everybody, they're sitting on their hands, man. Get, what the? <laughs> oh, I, I like the other side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when you come to Father, he's like, what you want, boy? You're like, come on, man. We talking about approaches. How to approach. This is a legal writ right here. Y'all hear me? This is jury prudence. Y'all get this? This is the right way to do things. I never mind. Y'all listening? So we read Luke 11 2. It says, Our fathers who approach him as what? Father. Second type is what? friend. Why? Because it says in Luke eleven five, 5 and he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? Y'all hear that? Yes, which of you shall have a friend? You know, friends are there to grieve you. Friends are there to inconvenience you. Oh, yeah. Look at you. You people. <laughs> no wonder you don't know. You can't respond. You ain't never had a friend. Because you got to show yourself friendly before you can have one. So you don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just take my word for it. Just take my word for it. You ain't never had a friend. Don't worry about it. I'll teach you about friends, okay? <laughs> you ain't never had it. Don't worry about it. I'll explain to you. I'll explain it to you. Okay? See, we still, verse 1, the disciples came to him and said, Yahshua, teach us how to pray. Just like John's disciple taught them how to pray. So teach us. He gave us second verse. He starts going through it. He's, we're still talking about prayer. Content is still prayer. And he said unto them, which you shall have a what? Friend and shall go unto him in the what? At midnight and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine. You know what you think? He's a friend of y'all, but he ain't no friend of mine. For a friend of mine is in his journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, no, he from in his mind, in his heart. Yeah, you know all that talking you do when somebody asks you for something, all this. Uh oh. You know, when you experience that grief, damn, ain't you got any sense, man? It's midnight out here, man. I've been in the bed, sleep. I'm trying to look at my, my family sleep, man. Everybody sleep. And you got a friend that ain't even my friend. They come on a far journey. And you want me to go into my cabinets and give you three loaves of bread, man? Couldn't you got that the other day? True, Damn! Yeah. <laughs> what kind of friend are you? <laughs> oh man! <laughs> and see, he will within say, "Trouble me not." Notice, he said. And he answered and said, but he, from what? It's not communicated outwardly. That's the stuff that is better off not said. You may think it, but don't say it. (laughs) 
Sal answered and said, trouble me not. The door is now shut. And my children are in the bed, with, with me in the bed. And I cannot rise to give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise to give him, because he is a, because he is a, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he what? Needed. And I say unto you, ask shall be given you, no matter how grieving it may be. <laughs> Seek, <laughs> and it, you shall find. Even though I'm tired of you coming to me at the wrong hour. Knock. <laughs> and it shall be open to you. <laughs> you hear what else you were saying? What a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> He's still teaching us. He's still teaching us. Y'all getting it? And all of this is based upon you meeting y'all's conditions. See, if you like your condition, stay where you at. Bitter, unforgiving, can't get an answer. Heart is hardened against your brother and sister. Satan is using this as an accusation to keep you from receiving y'all's blessings in your life. Huh? The third type of approach is judge. Brother Shane, go to Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Y'all ready? Yes. Everybody doing all right? Yes, sir. Glory to the king. Glory. Ain't, ain't the all trying to, ain't he showing you how to pray now? Yes, sir. Huh? Ain't he showing you how to get it done now? Yes, sir. Huh? I told you, man, this is a message. This is a word. <laughs> I'm serious. This is what we be looking for, man. Come on, bro. Same first verse. Read. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought to always pray. Ought to always what? Pray. So what is he talking about? Prayer, which is a petition. Is that right? Read on. And to faint not. Saying, there was in a city. Hold a on judge. for a second. Let me address that. He said men ought to always pray and do what? Yeah. See, out in the world they teach you pray one time. And if you pray more than that, you don't have any faith. That is stupid as hell. You got children? Don't you? Got three of them, right? If they know them cookies in that cookie jar, and you tell them no, how many times they keep coming to you? All the time. All the time until they what? Wear you out. <laughs> <laughs> then y'all should call us children. Yes, sir. Why you stop petitioning? Oh. Why you stop asking? Oh. Well, I, I'm spiritual. I don't want to grieve the father. Uh-uh, hold on. Uh-uh, hold on, Father. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know that that cookie's in that jar. And I want it. <laughs> and I want it. Give me that cookie. He said, boy, don't you come back here no more. Asking for that. An hour later, where you back at? Judgment. <laughs> I can't survive without that cookie. I'm going to wear you out. <laughs> I'm going to keep on talking. I'm going to keep on running. I'm going to keep on praying. <laughs> I'm going to keep on seeing <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 
Glory. Glory. Why you keep doing it? Because something is telling me. <laughs> what? There's some on the inside telling me to keep on. <laughs> Glory. Woo. Come on, brother Saint. Let's go ahead and let's let's get to, let's hit the gas. There was in a city a judge. Uh, there was in a city a what? A judge. judge. And he started talking about men ought to pray always and not faint. Is that right? Don't be weary. Keep praying, but don't faint. There was in a city a judge. Come on. Which feared not Yah. He didn't fear Yah. Neither regarded man. And he didn't care nothing about any man's person. And there was a widow in that city. There was a what? A widow. There was a widow in that city. Come on. And she came unto him saying. What did she say? Avenge me of mine adversary. Oh, wait a minute. This woman said, avenge me of my what? Adversary. Avenge me of my what? Adversary. In other words, avenge me of the devil which has a lawsuit against me. You hear that? Read on. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said uh, within himself. Oh, oh, he would not for a while. That's why you got to read it slow. You see what I mean? When you read, make sure you read it slow. And it says he would not for a while. This wasn't a one-time thing. This woman kept on coming. Read on. But afterward he said within himself. But afterward he said, there's a lot of communication going within yourself, isn't it? That means y'all see it all. Hear it all. Huh? He said within himself, come on. Though I fear not y'all. I don't care about y'all. I don't even fear him. Come on. No regard man. I don't even respect man at all. Yet because this widow troubleth me. Man, because this woman, <laughs> she keep on troubling me. Come on. I will avenge her. He going to do what? Avenger. He will avenge her. Why? Because she kept on coming. She wouldn't stop. Every time he turned around, all of a sudden, he come this widow standing for him in the courtroom. He's like, oh, God, I'm thirsty. No. Come back. Keep presenting yourself. Keep on presenting yourself. Read on. Lest by her continual coming. Lest by her continual coming, she what? She wearied me. She wearied me. <laughs> now, listen to the moral of this. Read on. And the master said, hear what the unjust judge said. Notice, hear what the unjust judge said. Because you remember, for a bread, a piece of fish, and an egg, you being wicked will give good gifts unto your children. And how much more will your heavenly father give the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, to them that ask? You remember that? Now, this one is the unjust judge. All the way extreme on the other side. Now, if the unjust judge can do this, if the unjust judge will get weary, get weary. That's an unjust judge. And he will still grant this woman the widow her petitions. Read, brother, saying, and shall not Yah avenge his own elect? Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah. Now he's just. If the unjust judge do that, guess what he'll do for you? Yeah. Guess what he'll do for you? Yeah. He'll avenge his elect. But watch this. Read, which cry day and night. Day and what? Night. Which cry day and night. night. Not one time, but day and night. Not two times, but day not three times, but. Until it manifests. Until it come to pass. Hallelujah. Until a blessing can be seen. Until you call the things that are not as though they were. Hallelujah. Prophesy. Read on. Though he bear long with them. Though he bear what? Long. Does he not keep putting up with us? Come on, he may, I know you, you've already arrived, but he keeps putting up with me. Hallelujah. 
I'm a little rough around the edges, but he still keep putting up with me. All right? I'll bask in your glory for a little while, but every time he see me, he go, oh boy, he go again. He come again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Read. I tell you that he will avenge him speedily. He will avenge him how? Speedily. How? Speedily. Speedily. Read on. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. When the Son of Man cometh. When the Son of Man cometh. Shall he find faith on the earth? Will he find what? Faith on the earth. Can't y'all see what's going on? The devil is trying to make sure that you become so weary that you don't even lift up a cry to heaven. I mean, he's trying to wear you out so bad, man, by your prayers not continually being answered. Because you don't know how to pray, that you stop praying. Huh? You're like, man, I keep on asking, ain't nothing happening. But today you got the key of knowledge and wisdom. Yeah, you did. Oh, yes, you did. Today you got the key. Create me a clean heart. Oh, y'all, renewing me a right spirit. You got the key today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, y'all will render verdicts on your behalf. And a lot more of your prayers will be answered if you just meet these conditions. There's a song that goes, search me. Oh, yeah, and know my thoughts today. Cry, what does it say? Cry. Try me, oh, Savior. Know my thoughts, I pray. Some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me free. Hallelujah. about getting your heart searched, coming for them correct, being open and honest, lay it out, hallelujah, did you finish brother saying, so he'll answer your prayer, God come clean and correct, hallelujah, Isaiah 58 9 says, then will you call and Yahweh shall answer. You will cry, and he shall say, here I am. If. Somebody say if. Y'all want the key to this. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke, the putting forth of the thing, always pointing out everybody else's mistakes. Huh? Always pointing out where everybody else falling short. No, 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 we want him to hear us, right? We want him to hear us, right? What? You will call, he says, and I will answer. Is that right? You will cry. Is that right? And, and he says, he will say, here I am. Is that right? So he's giving us the blueprint today, he said, but he says, if you take away from the Miss you the yoke, that's a happiness on you. That's a burden on you. If you take away the yoke of putting forth the finger. Always deflecting and reflecting on somebody else's. Capitalizing on everybody else's shortcomings and falling. Giving yourself a pass. Pointing at them instead of pointing at you. Hallelujah. And stop speaking vanities. 
Y'all, y'all in this? See, we need to go to the mediator and repent for that. That could be the major reason why our prayers are not even answered. Ain't even, man, who in the world called putting forth the finger of sin? No, but come on, man. Satan says, come on, you, you pray, Father, I need this. And, and, and just, it sounds like you got a good petition and stuff. And the, uh, your defense attorney just sitting there. <clears throat> and Satan says, yeah, it sounds like it. But look what he just said over here about Sister Lisa. He just got finished criticizing her. Huh? Oh, oh. That's my lawsuit, y'all, against him. And the judge, judge goes, yeah, that's right. That's right. Can't get any forgiveness unless your defense attorney, he can't even object. He can't even stand up and say an objection. See, you want your defense attorney to be in a position to say, I object. Yes. On the what? Of the grounds that they have met my conditions. And I'm asking right now for the mercy of the court. Hey! 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 Uh, <clears throat> y'all sure come on up here for a second. We're going to have to talk. Get up here, devil. We're going to have to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Give me just this, y'all. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Is that one? When you got the blood over there. Yeah, yep, you got the blood over there. Yeah, did you get, get Was it clean? Did you get clean? Okay, all right. Going back out to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Elder Donnie stands before you. Not guilty. He's free. You're free to go. <laughs> Satan, Satan, God, oh, shoot, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Y'all be doing this thing just. Come on, Israel. What he tell you? How many times we quote this over and 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 over? And over. Maybe today you understand it. Maybe today the eyes of your understanding is open. These six things do Yahweh hate. Yes, seven are abomination unto Him. A what kind of look? Proud look and a what? Lying tongue. Some of you lie so much you don't even know you're lying. You know why? Because you lie because of your ill-advised motives. You got false motives and false intents. Even if you got a lie to accomplish what you want and not get it the just way, you'll do anything you can to obtain that. And you wonder why heaven is brass. You wonder why your condition worsens. Hey! Hands that shed innocent blood. The heart that devises wicked imaginations. Some of you plot how you're going to Hold good from your brother and sister. Meditate on it. If he comes over here, if she comes over here, feet that be swift in running the midges. Can't get you to come to a prayer meeting, but boy, somebody got to slam them fast. Let's go. We're going to talk about something. I'm in. All of these is what Satan used to accuse you before Yah. See, because you commandment keepers. But see, in this era, this area, you err. And you have cleaned your own self in your own eyes. And you wonder why your prayers are hindered. Y'all being merciful to us today. Huh? Huh? A false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among the brothers. See, this reason why I don't worry about people, man, because they start doing this, man, I'm job will be vindicated already. You know why? You know why? The servant of the Lord, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach. What else the servant of the Lord do? Every tongue and every voice rises up against you in judgment. Condemn, for this is the heritage. 
Uh, see, I know how the court procedures work. That's why I watch all these enemies pop, pop, <laughs> pop, fall left and right. And I'm still in his presence. Still anointed. Still preaching. Still teaching. Hallelujah. Most high got word still going and people are, are ordinary standards being open all across this earth. People going to come from all over the earth and descend here next week for Passover. Hallelujah. Lord to the king. Courtroom strategies and procedures. <laughs> huh? See, when you put forth the finger using your tongue to point. I said, when you put forth your finger using your tongue to point. Satan's accusation remains in heaven against you. Then he uses the words you say to testify against you in heaven. This is why many of your prayers go unanswered for years. Isaiah 1 2 says, When ye come to appear before me, who have required this at your hand to tread my. Y'all hear? It? Yes, sir. Better one day in your house. Last thing. Offerings are very important to y'all saints. But not with the wrong motive. See, Job had the wrong motive. He already knew the system and how it operated. But see, we got to just y'all that won't accept bribes. Even if it appears as if it's an offering. You get it? Did, did Job's petitioning, crying out, bringing all these offerings day and night for each one of his sons and daughters, did it save them? They still died. Father ain't going to bear the sins of the son. He the sins of the father. No, the son of the sins of the father. He did all this hoping that y'all would, but they were wicked. Sometimes, oh boy, you make your petition, boy, and you see things start going on, whoo, you may probably want to stop on that one. But Job did right. He kept going. It said he did this continually. Still didn't save him. Now, is y'all still y'all? Because Job is a perfect example of how we are. As soon as we make our petition and prayer before y'all, and it don't come to pass like we expect it. We got an expectation and stuff. Then we start falling off into accusing Yah himself. I serve him. I did this. I've done that. And I've been doing this for many. I made sacrifices and stuff. And this is the things I get. Sometimes we don't even say nothing. We just stop serving. Huh? We still in the house, but we ain't serving no more. When I see you, I still say, oh, hallelujah. Bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to the king. I go through the motions, but I, my will ain't in it, though. Been done wrong to me. He ain't answering me. He ain't talking to me. I still dress the, the same way. I look, look like a saint. Talk like a saint. Act like a saint. Live like I, I do. I just ain't talking to him no more because he ain't hearing me probably because when you came to him you come for instead of the advancement of his kingdom you come for the advancement of your kingdom uh, seek ye first kingdom of Yah and his then all these things will be added to you then all these things will be added to you. I've been asking, ain't nothing been added. What you sought first? Hmm? Was it seek him or seek me? Did you go through the motions deceiving yourself? Knowing that if you say the right words, you know they're right. He can't condemn you then. Huh? 
You know you pray, you fast, you don't admit all this can do. Hey, I, I, hey, he got to grant me my request now. Huh? The heart is deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked, who can know it? I, y'all, try the heart. And the reins. See, instead of trying to bargain and deal with the most high, how about just line up? Uh oh. Have any of you used the wrong motives to try to deceive others to get your way? Malachi 3 2 says, But who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner of fire and a full of soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto Yahweh an offering of righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto Yahweh as in the days of old, as in the former years. And I will come near to you to and I will be a swift witness against the against the what? And against the uh, we got marriages being broken up because people are kid committing natural adultery and spiritual adultery. All you got to do is pray against the adulterers. Hallelujah. Against false swears. And against those that oppress the hireling in his what? Wages and the what? Widow and the fatherless. And that turn aside the stranger from his right. Don't that sound like Torah? Don't that sound like the law? And fear me not. Say of Yahweh of hosts. Listen, do not try to manipulate Yah with your money. It ain't going to work. I've sent people's monies, people's offers back to them all because of wrong motives. Is that right, Sister Nelly? I'll send people money back to them in a heartbeat. Somebody open up the letter. I send it back. Return to center. I don't even want it. What would you do? You open up an envelope and see $1,500 in there. What would you do with it? Oh, bless him. Who is that? Oh, really? Box it back up, send it back to him. I don't even want it. You ain't going to bribe me. Could I use $1,500? Sure I could. I don't need that $1,500. Hell no. I'll wait until the way maker make another way. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He the one said, I'll supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. Is he broke? No, no he ain't broke. He on a cattle of a thousand hills. Some of them I sent back the offers two or three times. They, they, they stopped everything. Who he think he is rejecting my offering. Maybe you should think a little bit. Maybe you should think a little bit. I mean if the Bible says he that is spiritual. He judges all things. But yet he himself is judged by no man. Somebody got to be spiritual. Who is a wise man among you. And endued with knowledge. Let him out of a good conversation of your heart. I mean if God tell you at least the truth. At least be able to judge righteous and unrighteous. You mean to ain't nobody spiritual. Nobody spiritual. Then what you sitting there for then. <laughs> what y'all out there listening for then? Right. Isn't that amazing? Yes, Somebody gotta be wrong motives. When you pray, most of the time you are addressing conflicts in the court of heaven. Do not allow the accuser to build a case against you. Did y'all hear me? You'll know if he has one against you because nothing will change in your life what you're praying about. Loving not our lives 
is to believe Yah, and that is accounted to us for righteousness. Remember, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Why? Because they loved not their lives unto the death. And did not Paul say, I die daily? Are we not supposed to mortify the deeds of our flesh? And see, some of these things, you ain't, they, you ain't dead to them. You're still alive to them. You're trying to be alive to these dead sins. And still trying to be alive to Christ at the same time. They can't coexist. Hallelujah. How lovely are your laws, O Yah. Amen. Oh, yep. How lovely are your laws, Yah, laws, O Yah. My flesh and my soul cries out to you, O Most High. See, over here, Yahshua said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But in the Torah, it says the same thing. The way, Psalms 119.1. The truth, Psalms 119.142. The life, Proverbs 13.14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when he says he's coming to the, in, in the volume of the book, because if you don't understand his calendar, you don't understand his laws, you don't understand none of this, <laughs> you ain't going to understand how he came. How can you minister to him and he to you if you don't know that when he's, he's the Passover lamb? He's the unleavened bread. In other words, he takes the sin. He's the first fruit, first one raised from the dead. Pentecost is when he sent his Holy Spirit, the trumpets. Um, now, I don't know about that one. That's the other one right there. They ain't going to return it right there, I don't think. But it's, it is when he's blowing the day of atonement, he judges the earth and the tabernacle is the marriage supper of the lamb. You got to know what the feast days say. You got to know what the book says in order to know him. And too many times we know what everybody else say. But we don't know about him. You should have got your answer today. Yes, hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More keys is. I mean, he gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. But why would you bind and loose anything when you work a little of iniquity? You ain't going to get your prayers answered. You understand? You got to be righteous, Israel. Glory to the king. Everybody all right? Told you you're going to get some answers today. Good word. That's a good word right there. That one right there, man, that's, that's one for the archives. Hmm? Help deliver to Israel. See, he just wasn't going through the motions doing all this stuff because it was just something to do. That was a purpose for everything that he did. And he did it all in timing, perfect timing. Hallelujah. So the blood will cry out for you too. I don't even feel sorry for those people who reject the Messiah. They have no idea. Yahshua said, if you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Hallelujah. So today we learn how to approach him as Abba, how to approach him as Father, how to approach him as friend, and how to approach him as judge. Yes. This is everything you need to know to go to the next level of getting your prayers answered. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure you do a house evaluation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then anything that the accuser of the brethren is still holding as a case yes, against you. You follow me? Yes, then you'll know how to go to Yahshua. You come clean before him. Yes. Then he can sprinkle the blood, put the blood over you, cover you. Yes. Then when the father sees it, not guilty. See you later. Hallelujah. 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 See, all this is going on in the heavens. Yes. In the real courts. Mm -hmm. The real tabernacle. Yes, the real city. That's where our citizenship is. We're written down in there. Hallelujah. So we need to start functioning even though we're in a foreign country. 
a foreign land, huh, we need to start acting like the dignitaries we are. While away in a far place until home comes. Or either we get home. Hallelujah. We royalty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You go to another country, they don't care nothing about your royalty. They don't. When it's all said and done, they're going to want to come to our city. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, they're going they, they to want to come to our city. Hallelujah. They have their little providences, but only, but only his city is going to be governing and ruling all this earth. Glory to the king. Let us stand, Israel. Most high of y'all, we thank you for these words. Pray these say and sing deep down in our hearts. Magnificent name of Yahshua. We do humbly, humbly request that holy angels be loose. To be on the highways. To be in the vehicles, around the vehicles. To guard every Israelite. To let them arrive here in the planes, in the trains, in the buses, in the cars, the vans, safely. Here for Passover. We bless you, Father. Father, we're praying for good weather. We're asking for good weather, Father, to... So that everybody be able to enjoy their time here with you as we come to celebrate the sacrifice that you have made for each and every last one of us. Thank you for writing our names down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for ministering to us your words of truth. We magnify your magnificent name, your Jesus. We thank you for all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, King Cunning.